Dr. Corda's lab in the biology department. There are a lot of different species of uh, fungi that live inside plants um, and in leaves. We're specifically looking at the fungi that are in leaves. I am extracting anaphytic fungi from leaves and we pulled the leaves from living trees and then we got the fungi, the endophytic fungi out of them, which are the fungi that live within the leaves. And we throw them out on otter plates. Um, and then we take that fungi and put them on plates that have cellulose in them, as well as ground up leaves, which contain cellulose. And um, we can see how well they grow on cellulose or on the leaves to determine if they're eating that cellulose or not. Because while they're in the live leaf, there's no cellulose, or they're, rather they're eating the glucose that the leaf is producing. And when the leaf is dead or the plant is dead, there's no more glucose being produced. So what are the endophytic fungi going to eat? Are they going to die? Or are they going to eat the actual leaf itself? I'm Emily Weatherhead. Um, I graduated from BYU with a major in biology. I research in fungi, uh, specifically endophytic fungi that can grow in really cold temperatures. I am here at BYU in the biology department and I work with Dr. Koida. We are currently growing fungi in two different temperatures. We're doing five different um, treatments. We are having them grow in um, cellulose, glucose, and um, leaf dust basically, and we're just going to compare um, their growth rates and their growth mass between those two temperatures and those treatments. My name is Catherine Jensen, I'm a biodiversity and conservation major studying at BYU. So last year we were out at the Goshen site and we noticed that um, some of the succulents were from the Salicornia rubra species were green while others were red, and it seemed like the red ones were out in the sun while the green ones were typically in the shade, although there were some exceptions. Um, so we did a simple experiment where we shaded some of the red ones and removed the shade from some of the green ones. And when we came back a week later, they had switched colors. Um, so from there, we started trying to figure out what was making the coloration happen, why that response was happening. Um, and because they're in the Caryophyllales family, or I'm sorry, order, um, we realized that they probably had betalines in them, which is a red pigment. My name is Augustine Tambe. I'm a bioinformatics major and I go to BYU undergrad student. So my area of research is ecology. I work in the ecology department under Dr. Coyd. So the experiment that I'm doing right now, we actually have a site in Goshen that we're going to. And my specific experiment, what I'm doing, I'm calculating the salinity and the salination of all of the different type of species there. And so what I do, I collect all their juices. I test their salinity and see if like one of the plants has a higher salinity than the other. So right now the site I'm working on is in the middle of Goshen in Santa Quinn, kind of in, kind of in between of it. And it's really right at the end of the Utah Lake, right where all the sediment and the salt dumps off. So it's kind of just like a salt field, right in the middle of Goshen in Santa Quinn. And it has lots of plants that grow there. And we're not exactly sure why they grow there and how they're able to. So that's what we're saying. My name is Noah Bokweg. I'm a public health major uh, emphasizing in health science and I'm going to Brigham Young University. So my area of research is, um, I'm working with these saline plants called halophytes, um, and I'm working in the biology lab in the life science department. So what we're seeing though is these three types of salty plants or halophytes. They, you have some that are growing on one plane, another that are growing in between that, and one growing on a lower plane, but all within like really close proximity to each other. So just like in the, in the course of, uh, I don't know, 20 yards, they kind of slope upwards. You'll have one species, another species, and a third species. And so we're just trying to figure out why are they growing in that pattern. I'm trying to figure out, like, did the depth and, like, the soil compositions uh, affect which plant can grow where? And it was a little tougher to do just gathering, data, like, soil samples. And so now we're trying to, like, grow our own plants and run the, like, test the same hypothesis, but using uh, the plants that we're able to grow ourselves. Ah. And if my eyes are just darting everywhere, 